The Jake Asman Show will begin shortly. Thanks to all these great Patreon members who help support the show. Get your super chats ready. Jake will be here in just a moment. If you love the New York Jets, this is the place to be. And now, the Jake Asman Show. Mike Tannenbaum is at it again. The ex-Jets GM has posted a mock draft where he makes moves for what he would do if he was the GM of each team with a first-round pick. We'll talk about that and much more. It's the Jake Asman Show, so let's hit it and get it started. Man, our Jets are primed for a historic season. We bleed Jets green each and every day. This is not the same old Jets. We have Garrett Wilson. Let's go. We have Brees Hall. Please subscribe and hit the like button below. Super Jet, baby. Cut the line. We have Sauce Gardner. We have Quinn and Williams. The Jets bandwagon is loaded. Now it's time to talk all things New York Jets. It's the Jake Asman Show. Ah, here we go. Welcome in, everybody. Show number two on the day. If you missed the live stream this morning, Robbie Sabo, the co-founder of JetsXFactor.com, joined us in his weekly Tuesday spot. If you're tuned in live right now, we're about to talk about Mike Tannenbaum's wild, crazy NFL mock draft. And what I appreciate about Mr. T is that he's not afraid to put something out there. And he does this every year. When he does this column for ESPN.com, he puts out a mock draft, not based on what he's hearing teams are going to do, not based on you know necessarily the, the best players and the fit for those players. He does it from the perspective of, I've been a GM twice. If I was GMing this team, this is what I would do with these decisions. So now that you have the premise of Tannenbaum's mock draft, let's cover it. With the first pick in the mock, Mike Tannenbaum as the Chicago Bears selecting quarterback Caleb Williams. No surprise. Top quarterback in the draft, Caleb Williams goes number one to Chicago. Number two, commander select quarterback Drake May. Maybe a slight surprise, but a lot of people had May as the number two quarterback all along. Tannebaum agrees with those people. There's been some buzz for Jaden Daniels. May to the commies at number two. Number three. Jaden Daniels, quarterback to the New England Patriots. So QB, 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 one, two, and three. Number four, the Arizona Cardinals select quarterback, huh? J.J. McCarthy. But Jake, was there a trade? No. This is where Tannenbaum is getting wonky. He has a trade being made between the Arizona Cardinals and the Minnesota Vikings. Kyler Murray goes to the Vikings in this deal. And I'm just going to read you why Tannebaum made this move. He says, look, quarterback availability is crucial in today's NFL. 66 passers started at least one game last season, and Kyler Murray hasn't played a full season since 2020. I really like McCarthy's long-term upside. The 21-year-old averaged nine yards per attempt and completed 72.3% of his throws last season, and he bulked up to 219 pounds at the combine. In short, I think he's a better, younger, more du- more durable quarterback than Murray right now, and I'm not passing up this chance. You might point to Murray's contract, which includes $35 million guaranteed and $29 million guaranteed for next year, but teams routinely eat substantial dead money these days for a better opportunity at the position. And besides, I think the Cardinals could get a first-round pick back in exchange for him. Stay tuned there. I might have something up my sleeve. So Trader Mike with a weird scenario here where Kyler Murray gets traded to Minnesota and the Cardinals take J.J. McCarthy. I don't see this happening at all. That being said, there is a jet angle to this. If quarterbacks somehow do go one, two, three, and four, I think that's good news for the Jets. Pushes down another really good player to number 10. In this scenario, if a quarterback goes number four, I think it's Arizona trading out, not trading away Kyler 
and picking a quarterback. I think it's a team that needs a quarterback coming up for McCarthy. And I think that team is probably the Vikings or maybe the Minnesota, uh, the, uh, excuse me, the Denver Broncos or the Vegas Raiders, perhaps. Maybe even the Giants, if they're in love with McCarthy, if they would move up two spots. I don't see Arizona doing this. Pick number five, the Los Angeles Chargers select offensive tackle Joe Alt, Notre Dame. Here's the thing. Chargers fans went nuts online over this pick. Tannenbaum writes, Chargers gave up 43 sacks last season, 13th most in the NFL. So despite all the top receivers being on the board and the, quote, glaring need there after trading Keenan Allen and cunning Mike Williams, I'm choosing to instead protect quarterback Justin Herbert. Alt is 6'9 with great movement traits. He gave up just six sacks over 2,142 snaps in college, fortifying the offensive line to the foundation of any Jim Harbaugh team. And that's especially true after Herbert missed four games last season with a fractured finger. The wide receiver class is deep. So I'm taking my offensive tackle one now and worrying about pass catchers on day two. Chargers fans went nuts because they already have a stud left tackle. They have a glaring need, as Tannenbaum even acknowledges, at wide receiver. And guess what? Tannenbaum takes a left tackle who then would have to move over to right tackle. So Chargers fans did not like the alt selection here, which is interesting because we as Jet fans, I think, would love it if somehow Joe Alt was on the board for the Jets to take at number 10. Continuing with Tannenbaum's mock, this is where it continues to get wonky. Pick six, New York Giants on the clock. All three of the receivers, the big three, Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, they're all on the board. Mike Tannenbaum has the New York Giants selecting Malik Neighbors. So four QBs off the board, all off the board, receivers all there. And Tannenbaum, in his evaluation, he says neighbor's speed is why he has him ahead of Marvin Harrison Jr. He thinks the wide receiver one race is really close. And he gives neighbors, quote, the edge because of his speed. So neighbors to the Giants at six. At seven now, the Tennessee Titans are on the clock, and they're taking an offensive lineman. Not taking the lineman many of us think they're going to take. Titans select J.C. Latham from Alabama. Tannenbaum writes the following. Titans signed Lloyd Cushenberry at center, but cut tackle Andre Dillard. They also gave up 64 sacks, tied for fourth most in the NFL, so I'm targeting Latham here. He gave up two career sacks over 41 games. He takes too many penalties, 17 over the past two seasons, but offensive line coach Bill Callahan would surely address that in his rookie minicamp. I would keep Latham on the right side where his six foot six, 342 pound size and strength should allow him to thrive. So Latham off the board at seven. As of now, Jet fans, Olu Fashanu and Talise Fuaga both still there. Pick number eight, Falcons on the clock. And if you've noticed something here, folks, Marvin Harrison Jr. is still on the board at pick eight. This is where if I'm Joe Douglas, I am on the phone trying to somehow get up to number eight with the Falcons, and I'm trying to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Now, this could be Malik Neighbors in the in, in the same scenario here, but if Neighbors or Marvin Harrison Jr. actually make it to eight, like Tannenbaum has it in his mock, if I'm Joe Douglas, I'm getting on the phone as quickly as possible and trying to see if I could get up two spots to eight to get in front of Chicago and take Marvin Harrison Jr. In this scenario, that's what I would do. Pick eight is Dallas Turner, though. Tannenbaum says that Turner's going to be a highly productive uh, defensive end right out of the gate. Pick nine, Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Chicago Bears. Tannenbaum says, What better way to put Caleb Williams in a position to be successful than loading up his supporting cast? Marvin Harrison Jr., nine in Tannenbaum's mock. How crazy is that? Once again, if I'm the Jets, and there's that scenario where one of the quote-unquote big three receivers are there and you love them, make the call, Joe. Get up there. <laughs> New York Jets are on the clock. Mike Tannenbaum would select, with the 10th overall pick, Olu Fashanu, offensive tackle 
Penn State. So that's the Tannenbaum top 10. Let's put it up on the screen here as we recap. Caleb, one. May, two. Daniels, three. McCarthy, four, in a trade of epic proportions, which I don't see happening. But McCarthy could go four. I just don't think it'd be to Arizona. Alt, five. Neighbor, six. Latham, seven. Turner, eight. Marvin, nine. Fashanu, ten. Here's what Tannenbaum wrote about why he would take Olu Fashanu. Now, mind you, the Jets in this spot, in Tannenbaum's mock, they could have taken Tolis Fulaga here. They could have taken Roma Dunze here. They could have taken Troy Fontanu here. They could have taken Brian Thomas Jr. here. They could have taken Brock Bowers here. But Tannenbaum, who drafted to Brickishaw Ferguson, is going with the tackle. He writes, the Jets signed left tackle Tyron Smith to a one-year deal. But given Smith's age slash durability concerns, Fashana would be a very necessary insurance policy and future building block. At six foot six and 312 pounds, Fashano has excellent feet and movement skills for his frame. He played 1,300 snaps during his Penn State career and gave up only one sack. He has perennial all pro potential if his technique continues to develop, giving the Jets a shutdown left tackle for years to come. New York also traded for Morgan Moses, but he's a fit on the right side and is a 2025 free agent. So, a little wonky how we got here, folks. But if the New York Jets came away with Fashanu at 10, I'm on board with it. You do wonder, though, if this scenario did happen, where the Jets are sitting there at 10, let's say they don't trade up, would they make the same pick Mr. T just made? I think it's possible, but what if they have Fulaga rated higher than Fashanu? Would they take Fulaga? Or would they say, we need Fashano because he's a left tackle? Or would they say, we're not worried about that best player available. Let's not take a worse prospect because he might not be able to translate to the left side. Right? Like, no, no Eagle fans going to be like, well, we shouldn't have taken Lane Johnson, who was a future Hall of Fame tackle because, oh, he, he was a right tackle. Right? Like, sometimes you just take the best player. But in this mock, I found it interesting because I looked. Right? Fulaga goes 13 to the Raiders. Adunze goes 14 to the Saints. And you might be saying, Jake, what about Brock Bowers? Brock Bowers, you know how far Tannenbaum has Bowers falling in his mock? Pick 22 to the Eagles. Now that's a team that if they took Brock Bowers, I'd be scared. Thank God the Jets don't play the Eagles this year. And I'll tell you why. Because I trust their offensive coaching staff to use them. And at 22, it's way different than 10. But if the Eagles got Bowers, by the way, and they got Saquon, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, Dallas Goddard with a healthy Jalen Hurts, watch out. But you look at Tannenbaum's mock, and it's worth noting, the quarterback's going 1, 2, 3, and 4. He also has Bo Nix going 12 to Denver. And I think this is important because if Denver starts to get nervous, they might not be able to get their quarterback here if the first four quarterbacks fly off the board. Would they move up? With the Jets, to try and guarantee themselves Bo Nix, if that's their guy. Or Michael Penix, if that's their guy. Like, that's the question I would have. Could the Jets maybe move back here two spots because Denver's so desperate to guarantee themselves a QB? And by the way, in this mock, if the Jets did do this deal with Denver, they'd be picking at 12 and they could pick between Still Fashano, he'd be there, unless Fashano would go in this scenario 11 to the Cardinals because they made the trade in Tannenbaum's mock with the Vikings. He has them taking Quinion Mitchell, the corner from Toledo. So Fashano would still be there. Fulaga would still be there. Adunze would still be there. Fontanu would still be there. And Bowers would still be there. Hopefully the Jets could trade back. I'd love that. But this is a wild mock, man. Right off the bat with the four quarterbacks with the trade. And then obviously the Giants going neighbors over Marvin Harrison Jr. And then somehow Marvin Harrison being on the board at nine for Chicago. If you're the Jets, you got to get on the phone and call up and get to pick eight and get them. That's what you got to do. 
The value is too good to pass up. Jet fans, your thoughts on Tannenbaum's mock? If you're not watching live, comment down below. If you are watching live, comment. Super Chats, they'll cut the line. Appreciate everyone tuned in. Please hit that like button. It goes a long way towards our channel continuing to grow. Today's Jake Asman Show is presented by my friends at Rhone Apparel. Hey, if you want to upgrade your closet, here's what you need to do. Let's talk about fashion and let's talk about how to upgrade your closet. I'm going to tell you about Roan Apparel. Roan stepped up to the challenge. Their commuter collection is the most comfortable, breathable, and truly versatile set of products known to man. They got products for every occasion. We're talking about the world's most comfortable pants, dress shirts, quarter zips, polos. The commuter collection from Roan can get you through any workday and straight into whatever comes next. Head to Roan.com slash Asman and use Use promo code ASMIN to save 20% off your entire order. That's 20% off your entire order when you head to R-H-O-N-E dot com slash ASMIN. When you look nice, you feel nice. Once again, upgrade your closet by heading over to Roan.com and use promo code ASMIN at checkout so you can receive 20% off. Check it out. Upgrade that closet, people. They got something for everyone. The quarter zip I wore on the first show today was a Roan Apparel quarter zip. Oh, by the way. All right. Comments, questions, super chats, calls on the Gus Buster hotline. Mike D's bleep says cocaine, hell of a drug. Just saying. It is a hell of a drug, Mike. But let me tell you, we know Mike Tannenbaum likes to be a little wonky, a little crazy. A little wild. Pastor says this draft will be very interesting. I mean, it's it's an exciting draft because you have quarterbacks involved, receivers involved, and you have some huge, big market franchises in need of those players. It adds intrigue. Rick writes in, that mock should be mocked. <laughs> People killing Tannenbaum for it. I don't think, by the way, Bowers gets the 22 for what it's worth. I don't see that. I hope Tannenbaum's right, though, that Bo Nix could be a top-12 pick. That could help the Jets. I'll take that. Ricky writes in, hopefully the Eagles are our last game of the year, LFG. Amen. (laughs) I'll take that. Yeah, I said the Jets don't play the Eagles. Hopefully I stand corrected, if you know what I mean. MJ Dunn says, Jake, I thought you were all about team offensive tackle. Unless I could get one of the stud receivers. To me, to me, I have Marvin Harrison Jr. and I have um neighbors. I have them in like my tier one of like I would take them if they're there at 10 somehow, or if I can move up a little bit, I'd be willing to do it. If a Dunze's there at 10 versus I guess it depends on which offensive tackle. That'd be a real debate for me. But then after that, I'm offensive line or trade down before I'd get to that next wave of receivers or Brock Bowers. So we'll see. Mr. McMoney says, Jake, we need you full time on ESPN New York. Tell them that, man. (laughs) I'd love to. I appreciate the support. I'll let you know when I'm on again soon. I'm on Mad Dog Sports Radio Saturday morning, 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern. And then I'm on ESPN National from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern time, hosting a baseball preview show before the first Sunday night baseball of the year. So back-to-back days of radio for me coming up Saturday and Sunday. Be on the lookout for that. Steven writes in, Jake, you don't think Mike Tannenbaum has these takes just to generate clicks and draw and draw back? There's no way he actually believes half the things that come out of his fat mouth. Well, first of all, Mike Tannenbaum is not fat. How dare you? Second of all, Steven, once again, these trades are what he would do, not what he thinks is going to happen. He's If he was playing GM, this is what he would do. And you know what? I actually think he believes a lot of this stuff. I do. I do. I mean, T- Tannenbaum made some crazy moves when he was the Jets GM, too. He wasn't afraid of a big trade. I think there were more guardrails when he was with the Jets, though. Now he's just letting it fly. So, yeah, maybe he's doing a little bit for a little shock and awe, but I mean, it's his reputation he's putting out there. He's been a GM twice. No doubt about that. Comments, questions, super chats will cut the line. If you get a channel membership, 
We will shout you out. We got a lot of new channel members, a lot of new Asmaniacs. We added the Gator emoji earlier today because we hit a new channel membership threshold. So be on the lookout for that. Let's get to some calls. But first, a super chat from JJ that just came in. JJ writes in, Jake, if we take a wide receiver at 10, what draft capital in 2025 would you give up to possibly move back into the late first, second to get a lineman still? Uh, I, I would be willing to basically trade any pick besides next year's one in the right deal. I'm all in to win this year within reason. I'm not trading away my future one next year. But I am willing to trade away my two again. And one of my forts this year and a second next year, if that's what it would take. I would do something like that. Maybe swap picks in the third round if the Jets are picking higher than a team. Whatever, whatever it would take, if there's someone they truly believe in along that offensive line, I'm open to it. I don't think they're, they're going to trade next year's one, though. I, I, I would be very, very surprised. Ladies and gentlemen, someone has made it rain in our comment section. Day Boss is truly a Day Boss, folks. Boom. Show me the money. Show me the money! Money, money, money. Hey, yo. The following as maniacs just became as maniacs because of Day Boss 17. DeAndre Vega, Wild Wave, three siblings, R and R. The big fella. How crazy is that? Big fella wasn't even a channel member himself, and he was gifted everyone memberships. How's that possible? Or maybe his membership expired today and he didn't renew right away. I don't know. But either way, very kind of you, Day Boss. That's very nice. Very nice. Everyone, if you got a membership from Day Boss, make sure you thank them. Let's get to some calls now, shall we? Doug on the couch first up. Hello, Doug. Jake, I hope you're having a good Tuesday day and afternoon. Um, oh. If, uh, if, I know he said it's, it's what he thinks would happen, but there's a reason why Mike Tannenbaum is no longer a GF because, Jesus, when I saw some of that stuff on his list, like I audibly gasped. Like, this is absurd. I mean, like, he wastes no time when he has J.J. McCarthy at four and Kyler Murray being traded, even though, like, you know, it's been clear that both te- – like, they, uh, the Cardinals have made it clear they're building around Murray. Alan, my electric bill is played. I paid. I just have the lights off. I like the lights off. Sorry. Just had to read that. I like I like the lights off. But, um, yeah, no, I would – if that – if what happened in Mike McCarthy's mock happens in real life, I will give 500 memberships. Because <laughs> it's like – I. I it's just not going to happen. Like no, I do believe four quarterbacks can go. Like you said, though, I do believe four quarterbacks can go first overall. Like to the top, not first overall. You know what I mean? I do think they can go in the first four picks, and I do think we trade up and get Marvin Harrison or Malik Neighbors if that situation happens. If it's the four quarterbacks that go one, two, three, four, I could see it. Yeah, I mean, I definitely could see quarterbacks going one, two, three, and four. I don't see the Cardinals drafting one of these quarterbacks, but I could see it. I also think Tannenbaum's order could be different. It feels like there's momentum towards Daniels going two and maybe Drake May going three now. I mean, look, it's all in the eye of the beholder. Like, Tannenbaum did this mock based on what he would do if he was a GM. He has Latham as his second best offensive lineman, according to this mock. There are people that have Latham as, like, their fifth-rated offensive lineman. So it, it, it all depends on, you know, your perspective, your opinion. It's an inexact science. There's no right answer. And and that, that's what makes this fun. Tony DeFlippo writes in, Jake, trade 10 plus next year's first rounder. We get 13 and Devante. Thoughts? I don't think the Raiders would do it. I don't think they would do it. I don't think I would trade next year's first rounder either. I think you want to keep that first round pick. What if Bleep hits the fan this year and you're firing everyone? You want a new regime to come in with no quarterback and no first round pick to solve their quarterback? I'd be a little worried about that. Look, ideally that first round pick, if you trade it, it's pick 32. I get it, but we are talking about the Jets. 
So I don't think I I don't think the Raiders would do that, nor do I think the Jets would do that after acquiring Mike Williams. And I think they could just draft a receiver. Sneakers the boots writes in. How much would you give credit to Tannenbaum for 06, 07 draft picks? I think Mangini kept the safeguards up drafting Mangold, Ferguson, Revis, Harris. Mike is a complete wild card. Look, he gets credit because he was the GM, but I think it's obvious that when Mangini left, the, the draft quality went down. I mean, we all could look it up. You know, Rex was a better head coach than Eric Mangini. Mangini was a better evaluator of talent than Rex. Now, those guys still had their misses. Mangini was all over Vernon Golston. So, once again, the draft is a crapshoot. Because Tannenbaum and Mangini did some really good work together. 06, 07, look at those drafts. And then this is still the same regime that used the top 10 pick on Vernon Golston. James writes in, we trade back with Denver for Cortland Sutton and a third or fourth will likely still get a good tackle. If that is a possible deal you can make, I'm in. Denver has given you no indication they're moving Cortland Sutton. But yeah, if you can move back and get Sutton, sure. Um, let's see. This one is from Gonzo, who writes in. Jake, thanks for the content. I'm painting my living room, and it's helping me pass the time. Keep up the good work. Gonzo, thanks for tuning in, man. Hope that uh, living room paint job is going well. Revolution writes in, Jake, love what you bring to the table, covering Jert's content and representing the Jets fan base across the world. Thank you, my man. I appreciate you, Revolution. Thanks for your support. Jer e t s Jerts, Jerts, Jerts. I'm just kidding. If you are tuned in, though, please hit that like button. It, it it goes a long way towards the algorithm boosting this video for more people to see. More Jet fans joining our community here. Someone wrote the paint in that uh, living room better be Jet Colors from Una there. Michael writes in, I, don't, I just don't know if these QBs are going to go this high. They've said that the past few years and some of them have dropped. You know, it's interesting because if you remember 2022, the Kenny Pickett year, there was all this talk about, well, who else besides Pickett's going to go in the first round, right? Oh, Malik Willis and Sam Howell. And like, these guys were day three picks. That's like the only year I could remember. Like we had hype for these guys and like it never happened. Like Pickett was the only one and he was like a middle of the first round pick. Every other year, though, you typically do get three to four QBs in round one. I mean, like, I just off the top of my head, 17 was the Mahomes draft. You had three in the top, I think, 11 that year. 18 was the Darnold draft. Obviously, you had five guys in that first round. 2020, you had four in the first round. People forget Jordan Love was in that draft. Jalen Hurts was in the second round of that one. Plus, you had the big three of Burrow, Tua, and Herbert that year. 21, every Jet fan knows the Zach Wilson draft. 22 is the only one I could think of in recent years where you just had that one first round quarterback. I think we're getting I, I think we're getting five in this year's first round. But I think it's Penix, not Knicks, who's going in the first round. We'll see. Could we get six, I guess, but I think we're getting definitely four. I'd bet on five. Nick writes in. How much of an effect do you think Marvin Harrison Jr. not participating in the combine and doing team workouts is affecting his stock? He went from undoubtedly being wide receiver one to now falling to nine. I don't actually think it's going to have that type of effect on him. I still think he's the first receiver gone when it's all said and done, Nick. I, I really do believe that. Now, if he somehow drops, maybe that did play a role, but all right, then I hope he drops far enough where the Jets could trade up with maybe and get him. Because I, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. will be a star receiver in this league. Roger says, playoffs or layoffs? That should be the Jet motto this year. Playoffs or layoffs? 
Right, Salah? When you lose, you're a loser. I suck. Joe D sucks. We all suck. That's right. You better win. All right. You better win, Bob. I suck. You do. You better win. Joe D sucks. We all suck. That's right. Start winning. Tired of it. Um. Allen says Latham in the top 10 is crazy. Fulaga better right tackle than him. Depends who you talk to. Lance Zerline of NFL Network has Latham as his number one offensive lineman. Isn't this fun? So subjective. Dave says Tannenbaum was just a glorified cap guy. That's not true. Tannenbaum deserves credit for the trades he made. He helped turn that team into uh, a legitimate contender. He deserves credit for the free agent signings. He deserves credit for the trade of Braylon Edwards or Antonio Cromartie or San Antonio Holmes. That's not fair. Mike had his flaws, but he went to the playoffs with two different head coaches that he hired. There's something to be said for that. He was a good GM with the Jets. It ended poorly. But I'll defend Tannenbaum's resume. Have you seen the GMs that have operated the franchise since he left? Douglas is the best they've had since Tannenbaum. The big fellow writes in, Jake, how far away are you from 37,000 subscribers? Uh, Big fella, it's a good question. I don't have the answer to that, but I can look it up for you. Internet's a little slow today, though. Hold on. We are... At 36,740. So, you do the math. What's that? 260? If my math is right, I think. Dave writes in, waiting for Gary's next annoying call. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary, up next. This one is going to be super annoying, so uh, get ready. I'll have the Shadow Realm ready to go. I've, I've been sent to Stupid Town, never, never the Shadow Realm. So, we'll leave, well, you know, we'll leave it at Stupid Town if the take is as bad as you're setting it up well, to be. First off, the Jets pick, it's not what I would do. I'm not going to hate it. I understand. I think the Jets are close enough that if you really just want to draft need, I'm not against it, right? Like, let's pretend my Brooklyn Nets had a draft pick, and they drafted need over best player available. That's unacceptable because you don't have any good players, so just get good players. But the Jets are close enough where if you're just trying to fill a hole, I'm okay with it. So yeah, but I'm it's also of- a need. I disagree with you. Offensive tackle is still a need on this team. Okay. Because of the injuries and the age, I don't disagree with that. I don't – I would – It's also, it's also a, Yeah, it's also a great tackle class too, though. Like, remember, you had people saying they can't win these games down the stretch because they're going to lose out on Alt or Fashanu. Now Fashanu's there, and people are like, oh, uh, no way. What? Do I have to to play back the shows where I defended the Jets actually doing this thing called winning at the end of the year? Because it's the draft, man. It changes all the time. And, uh, again, it's not what I would do. I don't hate it. I I understand the pick. It's just not what I would do. Also, uh, to Allen, Latham – what Latham, whatever you guys think of him, like he came into Alabama as one of the highest recruited offensive linemen ever. Like for three years, he's been grade A at Alabama. Now I'm more familiar with him than the other guys because you see him all the time at Alabama. But like if he ended up on the Jets, it's not a bad thing. Like I would not be upset at getting at getting Latham. Like, it's not that's not bad. But what I really want to talk about is his number four thing, JJ McCarthy. This is not me, okay? His two games against Penn State, the best defense he plays all year, in two combined games, 22 and 23, he was no touchdowns, one interception, 205 yards. That's combined in two games. What what did he do in the national championship game against the 129th ranked passing defense? Out of 130 teams, Washington's pass defense was ranked 129. What did McCarthy do? 10 for 18, 140 yards. I'm not making this up. You know who doesn't think he's any good? Jim Harbaugh doesn't think he's any good. You know how I know that? He doesn't let him throw the ball. How many passes did – I don't know if you know the answer. How many passes did McCarthy complete in the second half of the Penn State game? 
I think zero because they ran the ball like 30 straight plays. Zero. Zero. Yeah. He completed no passes against the best defense he's going to play all year. Well, they didn't have him throw. That's not me saying he's no good, Jake. That's his head coach who is an NFL quarterback and a damn good one. Why are you, Gary, 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 stop, stop, stop yelling at me. I'm not arguing for J.J. McCarthy. I'm not endorsing him. I don't want the Jets to take a quarterback. Why are you yelling about J.J. McCarthy to me? I don't think he should be in the top four either. I'm just telling you what Tannenbaum's mock was. I'm telling you how it would benefit the Jets if these quarterbacks go because that pushes better players down to them at number 10. That's what I'm trying to say to you, Gary. I don't care about J.J. McCarthy. I don't think he should go in the top five. But. I, like the idea that Harbaugh thinks he sucks because they ran the ball. No, because they had an NFL offense with 18 players that went to the combine this year. And they had a, they had a Heisman level running back. And what's his name? That's why they ran the ball the way they did. Teams like Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, LSU put these kind of offenses out all the time and they throw the ball. There's a reason why McCarthy, who bails on clean pockets, who has all of the same kind of flaws that you see in Zach Wilson. I'm not saying he sucks as bad as Zach Wilson, but you look at the flaws in McCarthy and they're eerily, and the strengths of McCarthy, it's all eerily similar to Zach Wilson. You're seeing him shooting up the charts. And so let me similar. guess, you so you want Joe Milton over J.J. McCarthy? I, I would. In, all I've ever said about, now this is hysterical. All what about Jameis said, Winston? Would you take Jameis Winston? Yes, I would take Jameis Winston. There it is. I, I can't do it, Gary. I can't. I don't care about these quarterbacks. I don't want the Jets to take a quarterback. But according to Gary, every quarterback ever sucks. Basically. Every quarterback prospect coming out sucks. There's no one ever good. It's amazing. Everyone's terrible. There's no one ever any good. I wish I had this show back in 2017. I'd love to hear Gary's takes on Mahomes. Or Deshaun Watson. Or Burrow. Gary, when was the last time you loved a quarterback? You have a third-round grade on Caleb Williams. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I don't know, man. It's an inexact science. The big fella writes in with a super chat. Jake, who gifted me a membership, I want to say thanks. That was Dayboss17 who gifted you your membership earlier. Shout-out to Dayboss. Very nice gesture. Um, like, I don't know why Gary was yelling at me, though, man. I'm not arguing for McCarthy. Take it up with Mike Tannenbaum. He's the one who mocked him at four. All right? Gary's called back in. Here we go. Whoa, whoa. I, 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 you don't need a quarterback. You need a good football player. That's what I'm saying about Brad Bowers. You need a good football player. Gary has called back in. He's relentless tonight, man. Gary, what do you got? Uh-oh, what's going on, Jake? Uh, I'm, I'm a little fired up today. Uh, let me ask you something. If you could get 30 touchdowns out of James Winston and 30 interceptions, <laughs> uh, we'll tell you a round of a candle. Caleb Williams is going to help him in the third round. And, and if he gets knocked down in round seven, I mean, his fight's going to go to the scorecard. It's probably fixed <laughs> anyway. I mean, I disagree with you like 100%. Uh, what you did miscalculating about not taking Joe Melton over Zach, a draft prospect. I mean, knockouts don't matter if you land enough jabs and you would have split decision. You know, you don't need a quarterback for a 12 round fight. You get the tight end, you get the tight end. Joe Milton. Knockout stone. <laughs> uh, uh, get the tight head because Bowers, <laughs> he's not going to hold the ball as long as Caleb Williams. It was just Lauer to himself and catch it and score down the ring. And then, <laughs> you know, it's a knockout fight. Wait. Hold, hold on, Jake. I think I owe you an apology. I just realized that I called into your Jets show thought I was doing the boxing thing and I freaking crossed all my thoughts. <laughs> anyway, we should take <laughs> Joe Milton and take Tyson over Jake Paul in round three of the draft. Thanks, Jake. Get <laughs> is a douchebag. Uh... <laughs> Thank you. Unbelievable. 
I like that version of Gary better for the record. I think Gator does a better Gary than than Gary does. Tremendous. Hit the Gator emoji, baby. If you're an Asbadiac, we added the Gator emoji yesterday when we hit our new membership threshold. More of your calls right now. David's up next on the Gus Buster Hotline. What's going on, David? What's going on, Jake? How you doing? What's up, man? I got to tell you, last time I called in, it's been a little while, was the night they traded for Aaron Rodgers. Wow. I, I don't know if you remember that night, but it seemed like six people in a row were all doing the call from like a dark place. We were joking about that. So I'm, I'm calling. I'm coming out of the darkness. Some positive vibes. Look, everyone's scared. Will Aaron Rodgers stay healthy? Will this offensive line stay healthy? No one can predict that. We haven't had the best of luck, but it is what it is. There are no, no football gods. Just just happens. So I'll tell you what. I'm not going into the season pissing myself. This is a good team with potential. And at the end of the day, that's all you can really ask for. I'm excited what they're going to do in the draft. Bowers at 10 would be a tough pill to swallow. But honestly, anything they do other than like a defensive lineman, I'm going to be able to talk myself into that that was the right move. Right, whatever they do, trade back, get picks, get a receiver, get an O-lineman. We're all going to be stoked. So I'm just saying, like, everyone relax. I right. think it's, our, like Aaron Rodgers says, just relax. So right. peace out. Thank you very much for all you do. We appreciate you. Hey, thanks, David. I appreciate it, man. Yeah, look, last year was a nightmare. It, 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 uh, it certainly scarred many people, rightfully so. But this is still a damn good roster. The Jets are covered by some like they were like the worst team in the league last year. They won seven games with the worst quarterback situation in the league. I made this point earlier. You realize there's a chance that the quarterbacks the Jets started last year, right, for 17 games aren't on NFL rosters week one of this season? Seriously. Tim Boyle's not on a 53-man roster anymore. He's a practice squad quarterback. Trevor Simeon might not be able to get a job, just like he was jobless before the Jets signed him, if you recall. He was on the street. He wasn't on a roster week one. He got cut in training camp by the Bengals. He lost out to Jake Browning. Zach Wilson right now, no one wants him. He might be on a practice squad. Maybe he's a third quarterback somewhere. So the Jets won seven games last year with three quarterbacks where there's a, a decent scenario where none of them are on a, a, a 53-man roster. And some of you think this is the worst team ever. I think it actually shows you they have a pretty damn good team. Now, they could get Rodgers healthy, upright, and you know continue to add a couple more tweaks here or there. They'll be ready to go. All right? That was a good call. By that last caller there. Right? He said something like this. R-E-L-A-X. Relax. Take it, take it easy here. All right. Bobby Midnight up next. Hello, Bobby. Hey, do it, Jake. Bobby. Bobby, do hey. you, what do you do all day, Bobby? I feel like you're always in the same spot. Well, I, I'm relaxing. My day off today. So I love it. I love it. So, Jake. So, Bobby. Was it Tatenbaum the one who went to get uh, Revis to sign back with the Jets? No, that was no. McCagnon. Oh, I got the wrong guy. Okay, I'm sorry. I got a, I didn't know. Him. I thought it was him. Because he went to that cafe or diner and talked to him. Oh, okay. I, I know what you're talking about. So I, I thought you meant when Revis re-signed with the Jets as a free agent after he left the Patriots. Tannenbaum was the oh. guy during Hard Knocks who dealt with Revis's agents at the Roscoe Diner trying to negotiate yeah. his contract. Yes, 2010. Yeah, that's how I remember that guy. I remember that guy. Though. Yeah. I disagree. Well, the Giants are interested in that McCarthy kid. I don't think that's going to happen. Um what he said about him. And then I think that might be a good trade for uh, what team does Minnesota have for a quarterback now? Minnesota, they're picking at 13 right now, Bobby. So. Yeah, but what quarterback do they have? Sam Darnold. 
So what do you trade to get a better quarterback in Murray? Yeah, but I don't think that mock is realistic because I don't think the Cardinals are going to trade Kyler Murray to Minnesota, and then the Cardinals are going to take a quarterback and then incur the dead cap hit the next two years. I don't think that's going to happen. J.R. Jet with a super chat for us. He writes in, how the hell did Gator get his voice to sound exactly like Gary? It's eerie. And the mannerisms. You should really look to create his own sketch show. Subscribe to his YouTube channel. Gator Sports. I don't know how he does it. People ask me this all the time. I don't know. It's amazing. It's so funny. Petey's watching on X. What's up, Petey? Jake, who's the one guy who you want on the Jets from the draft that you think will be available? Well, I can't guarantee any of these guys are going to be available. But if you tell me somehow Marvin or Neighbors are there at 10, I'm giddy. Or if you tell me Alt is there, or Fashanu, or Fawaga. The good news is a lot of these players will be there. So now it's just about the Jets making the right decision. Evaluate these players and get the pick right. That's all that matters. Get the pick right. That matters more than anything else. If you get the pick right, the rest takes care of itself. More of your calls right now. Rob, the Jet fan from Glenhead, is up next. Hello, Rob. Rob, we can't hear you. You're, uh, you're on mute, it appears. Nope, still can't hear you. Call back, Rob. It might be something with your phone. Edward writes, and what decent safeties are available in the fourth or fifth rounds? Uh, I don't have the answer to that. Dom C might, or some of our other draft experts I'll bring on, but I, I'm not going to lie to you. I haven't watched film on any fourth round safeties. I don't have time. <laughs> so we bring people on who have. More of your calls right now. The big fella is on the line. Big fella, what do you got for us? What's up, buddy? What's up, I man? A, what do you think? Uh, Minnesota, do you think that they would be a candidate to trade up to number three with the Patriots? Definitely. Because then they would draft the quarterback, and then the Patriots would get the draft capital that they're looking for, too. So I was just thinking, like, that would that would be a good thing. As for – as for Tannenbaum, I don't mind taking Fashanu if he's there. I mean, we need a left tackle, young left tackle. He could learn behind Tyron, you know. Um, I just think that that would be a smart move. I would prefer to trade back, but, you know, it's not a bad thing to get Fashanu. He's, uh, I don't know, He's he seems like a decent prospect. So... I would take him too. Yeah. I mean, I, I just, it's so funny because you go back, big fella, to like the end of the regular season. We're, we're, there's only two tackles in this draft, and it's for Shanu, and it's all, and it's like, we can't get them, and we're screwed. And it's like, well, look how many more tackles various respected people think are actually better than some of those guys. And right. now you have all these Jet fans who don't even want the tackle now because they signed 34 year old Tyron Smith and traded for Morgan Moses, which I think is crazy to me too. And what's funny is like there's a lot of people like that are, that have like a lot of revisionist history, you know. They they always look back. Oh well, we should have done this. We should have done that. Well, we're you know, first of all, you're not in charge. Second of all, you know, you deal with you know what situation you're in. You know, we could have drafted Mahomes, but that wasn't what we were looking for at that point. You know, I mean, I don't know. Just be happy with what you get. You know, pray for the best, and that's it. I think it's well said. Look, yeah. let's just get it right, big fella. Yeah, exactly. That's all that matters. Exactly. So, anyway, Jake, have a good night. Gator says the tired fella, not bringing the heat today. Yeah, tired fella. All right, Gator. We'll, Sound uh, a little tired. Yeah, well, maybe I'm a little tired. You know? I, I feel that. Ha having to deal with Gary, you know. <laughs> so. I, I'm just, you're, I'm just, I'm just playing. But. You're telling me, man. Gary takes <laughs> it. I mean, they, 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 they build character. We had a long debate with about Joe Milton in the Discord the other day. So. I saw it. I was yeah. like, I can't. I, I I couldn't escape it. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, have a good night. Big fella, you're the man. Appreciate your support as always. Oh, man. We love you, Gary. We just think your takes are ridiculous a lot of times. More of your calls right now. Let's go to Bill. He's up next on the show. What's up, Bill? Hey, how's it going, Jake? What's up, Bill? <laughs> I'm telling you, uh, dealing with Gary probably makes you wish you were on a uh, nice Hawaiian vacation while Gator dresses up as you and debates him. <laughs> oh, it, it might, that might be more fun. You're not wrong. Yeah. Uh, when, when it comes to the mock drafts, let's face it, all of us have our own opinions as far as uh, – you know, who we would want to pick as that first draft choice, whether we want to trade up or want to trade back. Uh, you know, you're going to have the ones who want the receiver, the ones who want the tight end, and you're going to have the one wise guy who says, of course we need another edge rusher. Edge rusher. So you're going you're gonna to have somebody with all kinds of opinions. Obviously, if we trade back and gain that second uh, round pick, it gives us a few extra options uh, as far as, uh, you know, who we pick. Um, just one question. Would it, is it at all possible that we could actually use our second uh, pick in 2025 uh, along with, say, our fifth round pick this year to try and move up and get a second second round pick if we're able to trade back with the first one? I don't know if that would be enough for a team to do that, right? Yeah. Like, cause, cause you would have to probably give them more picks this year. And I, it would have I, to be I agree, but it's, yeah, but it's a nice thought if we could actually pull that off and have a first round and two second rounds and a third round pick. Obviously, then everybody probably gets uh, the player that's going to satisfy them. And make your job a little bit easier so you don't have to go nuts. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, Bill. I, tell, I just tell it, Gator it, that that was a, a great uh, <laughs> Gary impersonation. You know, he's watching, Bill, so I'm sure he appreciates it. Thanks for the call. Look, the, the, the challenge the Jets have is picks are not as valuable a year out as they are right now. That's for every team, though, not the Jets. And the reason for that is you don't know where the picks are slotted next year. This year, you know where they're slotted. Draft picks in the now are always more valuable than draft picks in the future. A classic example is when the Jets traded for Aaron Rodgers a year ago, we didn't think they'd have the 10th pick in the draft. Thank God Douglas put the contingency in for 65%, so they do. But remember, no one thought the Jets were going to have a first-round pick this year. So that factors into the evaluation as well. Picks that you know where they are are always more valuable than picks that you don't. So if the Jets are going to try and get back into the second round, they're going to have to give up some of their capital this year to get it done. I don't think their second next year is going to be enough to get another second. I, 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 don't, I don't see teams doing that. The, the, the best way for the Jets to acquire a second-round pick is they trade out of 10 and the team needs to come up for someone. Hopefully it's a quarterback because then teams are willing to overpay and ignore the trade charts. So th that's kind of what you're looking at. But, man, it's hard. Daryl writes in, I guess we're not taking a shot on a quarterback prospect if we're stuck with Zach. Daryl, you don't believe this, do you? Excuse me, miss. I need to return this damn child. He's no good. Sometimes a child just is no good. Take this one back. Come on, man. Mike writes in, weapon at 10, tons of O-line depth in this draft in the later rounds. Lots of options also with a trade back or up. Tranquilo, Papas, let's have fun. Thanks for the super chat, Mike. Weapon at 10, I am on board with if it's a wide receiver. Otherwise, take the offensive lineman or trade down. And honestly, even if it's not one of the big three, the Jets 
tell you, Brian Thomas Jr. is our guy. We love him. We think he's top five player on our board. Fine. Better be right. But I, I would prefer receiver over Brock Bowers. I am not a Bowers boy. I'll live with it if they take him. I'll root like hell for him, but I am not a Bowers boy. If you're going to go weapon, I prefer to be a wide receiver. More calls right now. Let's go to Rob. Let's see if his internet has been figured out for us. What's up, Rob? Can you hear me now, Jake? Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, okay. I don't know what the heck went on. Maybe I hit the mute. Sorry about that. Uh, hysterical with Gator and uh, Gary. I mean, just when he was, like, bugging out, making those noises. Uh, I mean, I was I lost it. I busted a nut. I mean, it was hysterical funny. You busted Sorry. a what out? A family show, Rob. <laughs> Sorry. But that was so funny, and you know it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I'm just touching upon what uh, Tannenbaum said, like, you know, if McCarthy goes up. It, again, yeah, it is going to help us. I think it helps us in the sense that a lot of these guys where Allen made a big stink about Fashanu and Alt and us not having any chance of getting any of these guys. That's why we should have lost the New England game. We should have tanked. Turns out to be a, a crock of crap right now because we won those games. We showed face. We did not go out losing the Belichick, which would have sucked losing the Belichick. And now we still have a shot at Fashanu and Fuego. And who knows? Maybe Adunze, too. What? You laughed. What happened? I'm just reading the comments about a remark you made earlier this call. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at least I got a reaction from someone. Hopefully a good reaction. <laughs> Rob, never change, man. You're the but man. It, it just seems that we're going to have a better situation here, Jake, to pick up one of these guys now where Allen and guys like J.J. think it's doom and gloom. We have a very good opportunity in getting one of these O-linemen that we want so desperately. And I really think that one of these three wide receivers are going to shake loose. And we're going to have the opportunity to possibly get, I think it's Odunze who's going to shake out to us. I really do. It would be tough. I'm not going to lie. If Adunze is there, but Fashano is still there, I guess I would still go with Fashano because we need a left tackle for the future. But it would be difficult because uh, a wide receiver like that, boy, would that be a weapon. And he's big. You know, he's a good possession receiver. Uh, he put up crooked numbers last year. I would love it. You hear but, that music, Rob? No, I didn't hear it. What's going on? Look, I'll tell you what, if they somehow could be in range to move up a few spots to get Marvin or neighbors, or if a Doonesday falls to them, God bless Joe D. If you can pull that off. A lot of people uh, seem to enjoy that call from Rob. Mike, I see your super chat. I respect it. It's funny. I'll give you the sounder. I will not be putting that up on the screen, but I appreciate it. Back to your calls we go. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring on one of the greats, Charles Gorman. Next up. Hello, Charles. Hey, Jake. How are you? What's up, Charles? Nothing much, man. Just enjoying my week. I can't wait for tomorrow. I'm going to be looking at a wall firm tomorrow. Really? Yeah, it's part of my 60-day program and the career development program at JFK Hospital in Edison. That's pretty cool, man. Well, best of luck with that. Thank you. Uh, as for the mock draft done by Mike Tannenbaum, who, if you're not familiar, I'm not really, I was never really crazy about Mike Tannenbaum when he was a GM of the Jets. So, um, I think he had us trade down with a team, and I think he had the Cardinals trade with the Vikings, and the Vikings got Kyler Murray. You know, it is what it is. You know, I'm not going to lose when you sleep over it. Listen. Um, I'm not a necessarily a Bowers guy either. I don't hate the guy. I'm not saying he's overrated or stuff like that. But I think after the of, ugh, I can't even talk. after some further thought, I think it's best if we go with either a wide receiver, either it's a Dunze or some miraculous re, some miraculous miracle, 
Marvin Harrison, or we get one of the big time offensive linemen. We need more depth on the offensive line. You know, we can't have too many big boys up front. I look, I, I still lean with offensive line or trade back because I don't think the big three are gonna make it to ten. I uh, agree too. If one of them starts to slip and Tannenbaum have this has this mock where four quarterbacks go one through four, all of a sudden. Maybe there's, you know, a team that we think is going to go receiver like the Chargers. Instead, they go offensive line. That opens the door for one of these receivers to maybe be there. And if the Jets are in range to take one of the big three and they have it the same way we, as the general public, grade these guys as like those are the top three, then maybe they would do it. But I still would lean with offensive line. And I don't think there's any Jet fan that can complain if they take Fashano at 10 when all I heard for weeks down the stretch is don't win these games. You're not going to be able to get Alt or Fashanu. And now there are plenty of respectable people who don't even have Alt or Fashanu going in the first eight picks of the draft. So it, 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 these things change all the time. It's important just to pick the right player, Charles. That's all that matters. King Lulski just said in the chat, where's that damn soup? Where uh, is it? It's gone. It's gone. My mother's not making it. Um, she stopped making she it? No, she, she's not making it. She won't be making it for quite some time. Why not? Because she's not, man. I mean, I can't force my mom to make chicken soup. I mean, damn. Oh, you act like it's, uh, you know, you're, you're asking her to, like, why are you $4.5 million? Like, she's like Shohei Otani or something. Like, it's chicken soup. I know, but <sighs> give us a soup. I, I would love to, but my mother doesn't know you personally, so I can't really just give out my address. I don't know about that. They don't call him the big fella for nothing, Charles. The big fella? Yeah, he's the one who wants the soup. They all want the damn soup. I mean, what am I talking about? What are you guys talking about? Boomtown, Boomtown says, release the recipe. Oh, my God. You guys are ridiculous. Uh, some guy says, I'm hilarious. Thank you. Um, Listen, um. As for the draft, I just hope, you know, Joe Douglas pulls a draft similar to his 2022 draft. His 2022 draft is amazing. Um, yeah, so, so you basically hope Joe Douglas could have the greatest draft in Jets franchise history again for the second time in three years. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, 2022 was an incredible draft. I mean, I'll never forget when we drafted Garrett Wilson, my dad's like, why don't the Jets trade back to get a pass rusher? And who to behold, the Jets do it, and we got Jermaine Johnson, who still, to my surprise, fell uh, that deep in the draft, which surprised the shit out of me. Um, some people were complimenting my face. I shaved this morning, so that's why. You look good, Charles. Thank you. I try my best to look good for work. As they say, you dress to impress. That's right. You should do some uh, Rowan apparel, and I'll send you some Copper Johns as well. Copper Johns? Yeah, man. So, like hair? No. Okay, you, come on, Charles. You got to put some uh, some 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 beard oil on you. Nah, I'll pass on that. No, I think um, you need it. How about some aftershave? You don't want to break out after you shave. I do have aftershave. I don't know where the hell it is, but I do have aftershave. Well, it seems like you could use some more then. Yeah. Um, Charles, would you say you dress for the job you want, not the job you have? I'd say both. You dress to impress, man. I mean, you dress to impress. I mean, you can't go to work. I mean, let me tell you guys something. You can't go to work looking like a damn slob. I'm not saying you do, Jake. I mean, you all, when I can tell you always dress appropriately for work. You well, can't, I'm actually at work right now. This is my job. Well, I know, but you always dress appropriately. I mean, you can't. If there's one thing I will not tolerate, if I would own a business, I will not tolerate sags. You know, the part where you show your butt cheeks. I hated that when I was in school, bro. And I was like, why are you showing your butt cheeks? It's a freaking public place. You dress to impress. I, I agree. It was disgusting. And I remember kids telling me to wear that song. I'm like, fuck out of here. Excuse right. me. Right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yep. And uh, anyway, Jake, it was good talking with you. I won't take too much of your time. Charles, thank you for the time. Uh, you okay there? Yeah, I'm fine. So, uh, you going to kick me out or what? What I, I, I thought you still had another point you were going to make. Oh, yeah. Um, my Tannenbaum, I forgot. Yeah. Shit, I'm so sorry. I'm hey, all over the place today. Charles, you got a big job interview coming up, job situation. No, it's not an interview. I'm actually working there tomorrow. It's part of my 6 day program at JFK Hospital. That's what I meant. So, you, got a, you got a big day ahead, so we'll let you go. Yeah, thank you, guys. Peace out. Thank you, Charles. Best of luck.
Gator, you just got your next skit. You're welcome. <laughs> I gave you a lot of material there. I let Charles just be Charles. Chef Kevin did super chat mid call for you, Charles. Does your mom make chicken pot pot? So, Charles, people want to know what other items your mom cooks. <laughs> Charles, you going to kick me out or what? <laughs> What a call. What a call. Oh, my God. Good luck topping that one. Oklahoma Weedman up next. Hello, Oklahoma. What's up, man? What's up? Yeah, we're, we're sitting here wondering where old Weedman is. I haven't seen him on these videos in a long time. Yeah, Weed the People hasn't called in in a bit. Uh, yeah, I, 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 he's still in our Discord. I know he's still watching the show, but I think uh, – I think his job yeah, situation busy. changed, yeah. Awesome. Well, I mean, I got two questions for you. One, you've been all over this great country. What's the best fast food burger? Ooh, great question. Um, I'm calling in and out. I love so I really like In and Out for but like In and Out's like you can't beat like their efficiency, how quick they make it. Yes, sir. Well, Whataburger might actually be better pound for pound, but yes. I have issues with Whataburger because they fancy themselves as a fast food place. If you actually go and wait fast. in the drive through it takes 45 minutes. So it's I, I almost disqualify it based on that. I'm very weird with that as someone. And I lived True. in L.A. for six months. I've lived in Texas now for almost six years. So I think I could, like, objectively speak on both. Um, man, I, I mean, I grew up. I loved five guys, so I always throw them in the mix. Shake Shack is great. I got to think about this. I don't know if I could just pick one fast food. Is Shake right Shack, now. is that the East Coast place? Yeah, Shake Shack is uh, East Coast. City Field's okay. got a Shake Shack that's popular where the Mets play. That's the only one I don't think I've had. But I've had most of the regional burgers. Culliver's, I think, uh, is pretty good, too, if you never had it. Yep. I, I think Try I'm leading out. five guys right now. But five, five guys, guys is have so a drive. Though, man. It, yeah, and it's not really fast. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, yeah. it, it's it's more like a fast casual. Like, you got to go in and sit, True you that. know? Uh, that's, honestly, that's how Whataburger is now, though, pretty much. Those late is. night vendors, you'll be there for 30 minutes. <laughs> Yeah, you're right about that. I, honestly, I, uh, maybe maybe just the classic Big Mac from McDonald's still still yeah, a still couple hits, uh, man. a couple double cheeseburgers, put them together, forget about it. Yep. But uh, my my Jets point is the way we're building this offensive lineup. Why not Jackson Powers Johnson? I think this guy is Quentin Nelson. And you move ABT to tackle, you're playing tackle, sir. You know he's not he's not stayed healthy at guard. Who knows? I mean, he got hurt at tackle, but. Can we rely on him? Let's get a guy that's a for sure thing. Add it to it. Well, he doesn't have a spot to play, though, if you take him. Uh, I mean, which, which you could say the same thing with the tackles, but you know Tyron Smith's getting hurt, and Morgan Moses is coming off injury, and he's an Ironman, but he's an older player. Like, that, that's, I think, why. Because, like, it's a stud tackle class. You're picking in the top ten. If they trade it back, maybe he's an option for them. But I, I don't see it. Now, yeah. it's not it's not a bad thought, though, because he's a really good player. I just think they're going to value tackle flexibility over guard slash center flexibility. True. It does seem like he's probably going to end up being probably a top 15 pick, though. So, I don't know if yeah. the trade down is going to work. If, uh, but, if he slides, though, and, you can, if, and you're picking in that, like, 15 to 20 range, maybe right. he's an option for you. Yeah. But, anyways, man, great show. Glad to call in again. Hey, great call. Appreciate you, Oklahoma. Great call. Calls have been great today. From Gary to Charles to everyone else in between. To Rob talking about something with nuts that I won't repeat. What a what a what a what a show. What a life. What a time. That's gonna do it for me. I want to thank everyone who tuned in. Thank you to everyone who submitted the super chat. Thank you to Day Boss, who gifted five channel memberships earlier. I'm back with a show in the morning tomorrow, and then we have the Buffalo Jet fans scheduled in the afternoon. So at least two more shows tomorrow. Then the schedule Thursday, Friday is going to be a little different because of my travel schedule. So there probably won't be multiple shows a day on those days, maybe just one. So be on the lookout for that. I have recorded some content that will air on the channel, so you guys will still be covered. And look, if there's breaking news, I'll figure out a way to go live if there's a clowny signing or anything else. So Appreciate all of you for the support. Please hit that like button on the way out of here. It goes a long way uh, towards this channel continuing to grow. And just a reminder, 
We announced it in the first show. We are broadcasting from Circo Resort and Casino during the NFL draft. We have a mega cast being planned. If you have a business or a brand, you're interested in some sponsorship opportunities. Spots are limited, but I do have some open inventory. Shoot me a note, asminjake at gmail.com. I'll connect you with my marketing reps, and we'll get something done for your product, your brand, your business. It's going to be a massive, massive event, and I cannot wait to see what the New York Jets will do in the NFL draft. On that note, that's going to do it for me. Everyone have a great rest of their Tuesday. J-E-T-S, Jets, Jets, Jets. Hello, Jake. I just had dinner. I had a couple of servings of chicken soup. My mother's homemade chicken soup. Hey, Charles, I need some of that chicken soup. It was delicious. (laughs) I'm glad to hear it. I know it's delicious. I need some of it. I love to eat, so what can I say? (laughs) Send it this way, Charles. (laughs) I was not expecting I love this show, man. We got the best callers. We really do. The only thing that can make this night better is some Charles Gorman Mother's Chicken Soup. Hello, Charles. Hey, Charles! I need some more of that chicken soup! It's Lenten season for us Christians slash Catholics, so... I need some of it, Charles! And I'm sorry I didn't have any chicken soup today. You sitting up there eating enchiladas! I had a calzone for dinner. I need it, Charles! It was delicious. Where is... Anyways, uh, I need some of your mama's chicken soup. I love to eat, so what can I say? I love this show, man. We got the best callers. We really.